The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Okay, so problem two, part B, is another trig equation. This one's a little bit different because if you notice, we have a cosine squared and a sine x. So, this one we have to treat a little bit differently than the previous one because the problem is, in order to solve this, we need to combine these trig functions somehow to be in terms of one trig function because you can only solve an equation if you can boil it down to cosine x equals something or sine x equals something or tangent x equals something. We have a cosine and a sine. That's not good. So what you need to do here is convert them all to one or the other. The easiest way to do that here is since we have cosine squared, if you use your Pythagorean trig identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. If you solve for cosine squared x, you can see that cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So we can substitute that sine x minus 1 equals 0. And now we only have sines. Once you get to this point, now what you should recognize is I have a sine squared and I have a sine. This is going to turn into a quadratic. So first let's fa uh, distribute 2 minus, 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus sine x minus 1. Combining all of our like terms and uh, making the coefficient on your sine squared positive, that's usually a good idea. We'd get 2 sine squared x. Remember, since this is equal to 0, you can reverse the signs on everything, and that's fine. Plus, instead of plus sine x, let's put in negative sine x. And we would have 2 minus 1, which is 1, but we're flipping the signs, so we get negative 1. You can see here, this is a quadratic form. We have a squared uh, power of 1, constant, exactly a quadratic. But instead of x, we have sine of x. So when you factor this, you're going to get 2 sine x and something, and sine x and something. So we need multiplication to negative 1 and addition to negative 1 also. So the only way we could do that is if this was plus 1 minus 1. Because we'd have plus sine x minus 2 gives you negative 1 plus 1 times negative 1 gives you negative 1. So now each of these factors is equal to 0. And by the way, if you wanted to just do u equals sine x and then solve it in terms of u and plug back in, that's fine too. But recognizing that it's just x, uh, sine x instead of x is the same thing. So we have 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. Or we have sine x minus 1 equals 0. Those are our two potential solution equations. Now these boil down to kind of what we did in problem 2a. Just solve for sine x and see what we get. So if we subtract 1, divide by 2, this gives you sine x equals negative 1 half. And this one gives us sine x equals 1. So we just need to figure out where those are. Well, where is sine x equals 1? Sine x is equal to 1 only if x is pi over 2. So we get one solution from that. Where is sine x equal to negative 1 half? Well, the reference angle, sine x equals 1 half, would be pi over 6. But since it's negative, that's third and fourth quadrants for sine. So we need pi over 6 written in those two quadrants. So that's going to be 7 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. Remember that if you always, if you want to find uh, the third and fourth quadrants of a reference angle, the third quadrant is always pi plus the reference angle, and the fourth quadrant is always 2 pi minus. So pi plus pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. 2 pi minus pi over 6 is 11 pi over 6. So these three are all solutions to that equation. The Teaching Center.
UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.